Okay, right here we're going to look at this ex simple extends program. And I just, you know, went into Java and I created a class and I called it simple panel no extends. And the first thing we want to do is import the swing panel. And this is the whole big deal. If you're going to use swing, you got to got to import. Now let me say I believe I talked about this just a little earlier uh, in the notes. But Swing is basically MVC architecture, which is built on what's called the AWT Aut architecture. And it's all these, it's considered what's called a light architecture, where Aut is kind of a heavier architecture, uses more of the system components. And Swing basically is a great place to build GUIs and components. And so in order to use it, it's a class, you have to import it into Java. So we're going to be importing all those classes. And the first thing we're going to learn about, and you'll be using it from time to time, is the J option pane. Okay? It's just a real, real quick way to basically bring in something as opposed to a console, console to bring up a little pane that you can enter in uh, things into and you can actually interact with. So in order for it to come up on the screen, you've got to import it and it's part of the, the, the swing class. Now I could have used a wildcard right here if I want it. You know what I mean by a wildcard? You actually you got it. You got that down. I could just use a wildcard and imported all the swing classes by decide not to do that in this case. So I just use J option pane. And so here's my class, and you, you, you're very familiar with this, public static void uh, main, and you use string with the brackets args, okay? And what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to, let me open this up so you can see it all. Go ahead and go uh, declare a variable, string variable. I'll call it my string one. And then I'm going to go, hey, let's use the J option pane. And in the J option pane, there's several methods, all right? And uh, let me highlight that, see? And if you see that, I'm going to hit F2. You know how I rolled over it and I got that code hitting? I'll hit that, hit the F2 button, that will bring it up. You can see all, uh, just a few of the methods there that are involved in the, the, the pane. And right here I'm using this show input dialog. This prompts user for some input. And so what's going to happen is the pane's going to come up, and just like it did in the console, it's just going to wait. And then you type your input in, and OK, and then it takes it. And it's going to throw that input into my string. See that? So that's a real cool thing with uh, Eclipse. You just roll over it, right? And it's going to give you the methods that will go, wrong, go along with that. There's a number of other methods, too. But we'll just, we're going to deal with that one. So Eclipse is a wonderful programming interface. You know, I, I really, I'm sold on it. <laughs> so here we go right here. Same thing. I'm going to create another string in, in the J-Action pane. And it's going to go show input dialog. Enter your second number. So I'm going to add two numbers together. Now, the problem with this J-Action pane is, is that it actually is giving me strings, not integers. So, you know, Java is very tightly strict typed. In uh, PHP I could get away with this and try to turn the string into a number but in Java it won't, it's going to complain. So I've got to parse or convert that uh, string into an integer so the syntax for doing that is just take the string one parse int dot integer. So I said that backwards, excuse me. Integer dot parse int string. So I'm going to create a new uh, variable called number one, declare it as an int, that's how it goes, int number one, equals integer.parse int my string, and sticking that my string in there. That's just the syntax, so whenever you want to do that, you just need to use that syntax. And so I'm going to get number two, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to create an integer, call it number two, and I'm going to go integer.parse int uh, string two, and just put string two into that uh, spot right there, and that will change that string into a number, and now I can add those two together. And finally, what I'm going to do is create one more integer, my sum, and go my sum, int my sum equals number one plus number two. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I want to show the results. And so after it's done all this, it's going to I'm just going to call jpane again. Dot show message dialog, and I have four parameters here I can do. The first parameter is you set to null. That's going to center center it. The second parameter is going to be the message that's going to come back on the screen. And so I went ahead and concatenated uh, adding some equals to my sum. So I concatenate that string with the number. So it's going to show what the number is equal to. A little bit of text there. And then the next parameter there is going to be kind of the title. All right. And the final parameter gives me the ability to add an icon or not, and I decided not to. So I'm just going to say plain message. Okay. And so what I want to do is just roll over this one more time. So now that we have that, we're just going to run the program. So let's run it. Cross your fingers. Hope it works. And it's going to save it for me automatically, Eclipse. Thank you, Eclipse. 
And there it is. Isn't that cool? Now, that's a lot better than console, right? You're starting to feel alive here. So let's say let's enter a 3. That's your first number. Enter your second number. Let's enter a 5. And if I hit OK, I should get 8. Yay! Adding equals 8. That's it. So this is just like a quick, easy, you know, kind of visual console in a sense. Where you're going to actually going to get a little bit more advanced at this. You're actually not going to use this, but this is the beginning. And it's the easiest thing to start off with. So we decided to start with that. And then we're actually going to go to something a little bit more complicated. But I want to make sure we get this, um, get this programming down. So the next thing I want to do is I want to extend this. And extend is a, a, an inheritance idea. So let me go along here. And, uh, and all it's going to do is enable me to get rid of uh, using this name, J Option Pane. But uh, it's very powerful. So let's go ahead and go to the extend uh, example. Let me bring that up. All right, using Pane is what it's called. Right, that's the next one, using pain. And it's in the notes, and so if you lose track, just go back to the notes like I just did, and I should have done that in the beginning. And you can see the name of it right here. That's the name of the program, using pain. So you save it as the name. Using pain, you save it as the name. Okay, so using pain, what I'm going to do here is use the concept of extends, and this is extremely important in programming. And what it is is there's a package out there, hoo-hoo, and there's all these methods in that package. Shaha, and if I come along here and extend it, what happens is everything that I write below that becomes available, okay? So all these methods are available without me calling, calling J option. Now, it looks like I just got rid of one line, right? So here, no longer do I have to put J option pane. If we go back to the previous program, you can see I was sticking in J option pane and then dot show input dialog. But in this using pane, I got rid of using that. I can just put show input dialog. Because what I've done, I've gone using pane, this will be the class, extend it with J option, which means it inherits all those methods from J option pane. And now I can use it without typing in the word J option pane. So what, what I'm doing here is that I'm actually, there's the J option pane swing class. And I can uh, basically in Java extend, uh, the using pane is a class I'm creating. So when I extend it, whatever I extend it with, whatever class I extend it with, it inherits all the methods in that class. Absolutely. It's, it's almost, when you extend, it's like you've actually written the code into the program. It's pretty, it's powerful. This is the most powerful thing in object-oriented programming. And it's as I've said before, we're going to learn something called overwriting. We're not going to get there today. But uh, it, it gives you the ability to, to take any program that's already been written and, and it's actually as if you're writing it again without typing it by using the extends program. And it's an extremely powerful technique. Um, uh, and it's what object-oriented programming is all about, believe it or not. So you can see all I did, it's almost the same program, but all I've done is now eliminate that J option pane name. I don't need that anymore. And it's the same. Pro and no longer have to use J option pane here. However, in this last one, I did have to use it. This in this key name right here, I did have to throw it in there because it didn't know what I was doing with that variable. So that's the only place I had to use it. But besides that, it, it it's going to run exactly the same. I'm going to run the program. My pro my first name number. It's a five. Okay. My second number, let's make it a 6 and pray that it will turn out to be 11. Ho -ho, I can still add this morning, which is good. So we're good. And, and, and that's very simple. Now we're going to go next from here to the constructor. So right here, we've been using uh, the main method, which you saw in all the MIT stuff. And I said, oh, look, Porter, we've got to put everything inside here if we're going to run it. That's the first thing that runs. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a constructor, put all my commands in the constructor, and just put